Hey everybody, welcome to episode 33 of Gorilla Radio Show, top 10 primates that can absolutely fuck you up in a 1v1. So we've got some big changes coming to the Gorilla Radio Show. The iron hand of copyright law has come for placeholder songs we've used in older episodes. We're going to be experimenting with an official Gorilla Radio Show theme song. Some older episodes might temporarily disappear or in drastic cases get re-uploaded. We have some backups of everything, so nothing should disappear to the void, but expect some long overdue retcons of the intro and outro music in our episode catalog. More importantly, however, we have a very special guest joining us this episode, and for that reason, it may be many of today's listeners' first episode. Let's start out by introducing ourselves. I'm Greg. I'm not a primatologist. I'm mostly <laughs> here to, to be a bully, so that's me. Um, Austin, go ahead. Yeah, so I'm Austin. I'm the resident like research primatologist. I do work with monkeys. I've worked in chimp sanctuary, uh, in a lab, all sorts of stuff. Um, hey, I'm Chandran. I'm the only thing keeping these two from killing each other uh, on the <laughs> podcast every single time we record. Um, it's a lot of work. It's a thankless job, but I'm proud to have it. Awesome. And our very special guest, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Mamadou, and uh, I'm pretty much an internet zoologist. I talk about animals online. I make jokes, and uh, that's pretty much what I do. Hell yeah. We're glad to have you here. Yeah. Great. Glad to, have glad to be here. <laughs> So yeah, um, before we get started with the bulk of our episode that we sort of had planned out, I want to take some time to do our little monkey fun fact that I introduced last episode. Um, speaking of last episode, we forgot to fully explain the reason why mandrills have blue faces. We kind of got caught up in a joke about them having like beat faces and stuff. <laughs> so um, to fully answer that question, the blueness of a mandrill's face correlates to the testosterone level of mandrills um essentially the high (laughs) (laughs) essentially the higher the testosterone of the mandrill um the bluer the face this is very similar to something that happens with proboscis monkeys where um the size of their nose also correlates with testosterone levels and also the redness of their penis uh which (laughs) in both cases is controlled by a like protein layer complex that i'm not really going to get into the whole biology of right now but um, yeah. No matter so how that's much the... I beg, Austin will not stop talking about primate sex. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I guess to sort of introduce the main content here, um, Mom, I've noticed that many of your viewers in the comment sections or otherwise of your TikToks and YouTube videos are uh, they express a fear of a Planet of the Apes style takeover when you talk about some of the things that chimps do, which um, I'm here to assure everyone there will there is no uh, upcoming uh planet of the apes style um takeover from chimps uh however there is one in progress currently um <laughs> so all around the world wild primate populations are clashing with human settlements and in many cases beginning to encroach upon and invade human territory pushing people out of their homes we see this in Uh, Uganda, we see this in Japan, and we see this in St. Kitts Island. Um, Our first example actually comes from rural Uganda. In an article entitled, I am scared all the time, chimps and people are clashing in rural Uganda. We're going to read you guys some excerpts from this article and talk a little bit about what the clash means before moving on to our second example. Um, Our first excerpt comes from people living in this village. Uh, The chimps had been coming closer for a year or two, but on July 20th, 2014, scary tribulations gave way to horror, a form of horror that has struck other Ugandan families as well. That was the day when a single big chimp, probably an adult male, snatched the Samadis family toddler son, Majuni, and killed him. So um, this is a quote from a resident of the village whose name I believe is Tegeka Samada, so... I'm not Ugandan, so if anybody wants to correct me in the comments, please do. (laughs) Um, The quote is, A chimpanzee came into the garden as I was digging, uh, Samata recalled during an interview in early 2017. Her four young children were with her that day as she combined mothering with hard hard field work, but she turned her back to them to get some drinking water. The chimp saw his chance, grabbed her two-year-old son by the hand, and ran. It broke off the arm, hurt him on the head, and opened the stomach and removed the kidneys, Samata said. Then... Stashing the child's battered body under some grass, the chimp fled. Mujuni was rushed to a health center in a nearby town, 
Muhuro, Muhuro. <laughs> yeah, just that. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm trying. But uh, but that little clinic couldn't treat the eviscerated child, and he died en route to a regional hospital. Such so a brutal way of that's saying that. That's some bleak shit right there. Eviscerated. I apologize, God. Mamadou, that your episode where you get to hang out with us is one where we talk about uh, children being mauled by children. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I that's the direction we're going. I promise you I have at least maybe five videos talking about Sims in that match. Oh, so no. Yeah. No, uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not on familiar territory. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Ronan Donovan, the author, he followed this up by saying, the main driver of the conflict, it seems, is habitat loss for chimps throughout the areas of western Uganda, forested areas outside of national parks and reserves, which have been converted to agriculture as the population has grown. And he said, I am scared all the time that other chimpanzees might come back. Uh, Tengeka? I I really hope, I probably butchered that. (laughs) said that in an earlier interview. And despite law and custom, there have been retaliatory killings of chimps. The article says late last year, an adult male chimp in the area was fatally speared. A young female was also found beaten to death there with sticks and stones. Yeah. So, So, um... Yeah. What the fuck, right? <laughs> yeah, this is this is really heavy stuff to open up on, but I've talked about this before where um there hasn't really been an established like tradition of spear hunting chimpanzees. There is at least one example with gorillas where uh people had employed a something called a gorilla dance where they basically mimicked a gorilla's movements and like eventually just enclose in a circle upon like a single lone gorilla and then just started spearing it to death. But uh, I've never seen it happen with chimps, so it's interesting that uh, in retaliation, these people sort of formed, like, hunting parties to just, like, kill chimps, pretty much. So, yeah, I don't... It's um, some really <laughs> brutal stuff. It's, it's... I don't want to say it's, like, warfare, because it's, you know, between humans and animals, it's, it's not the same thing as war, but it's... It's, uh, <laughs> it's pretty bad. It, it does remind me... Greg, you've talked... I think on the first episode, you were the one who brought up the Gombe Chimp War. Are you familiar oh. with this? Yeah. You know about that one, Mom, too? <laughs> that's, that's, that's a hard to watch, yeah. It's a, it, I think that was what our first episode might have been about. Uh, it was first partially second. about that, yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's a fucking nightmare. Um, <laughs> no, chimps, are, chimps are exceptionally brutal. I know you've covered it a lot in your TikToks. They, they, really, they really, really will kill you for the fun of it. Mm-hmm. but aren't yeah, they just watched... like a reflection of us i think that might be what disturbs us the most just yeah. even the yeah. way they like wage these acts of war against rivals it's like it's almost human like like the intent like how the way they uh, plan things that i don't know i've seen videos where they will have a meeting point where all the members in a troop like kind of convene and then they'll go silent mode walking through and every once in a while they'll stop they'll like take i guess uh They'll take heed of their surroundings and then keep going. Uh, military silence, by the way, single file okay. line. And then the alpha, he does whatever signal he does, and then they just charge. And it's like, where have I seen this before? It's it's eerie because that's probably the best reflection of human like warfare and violence that you're ever going to see in nature. And it freaks me yeah. out. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's yeah. the whole reason we called it a war is just because it it if it you know looks like a war and it's uh. T- uh, acted out like a war, then we're going to call it a war. But, you know, it's just unusual because chimps and, like, maybe bonobos are the only, like, uh, animals other than humans who have the capacity for this sort of thing, really. Um, we've, you know, we've also seen and talked about uh, chimps will form uh, hunting parties where they get sharpened sticks and chase down uh, red colobus monkeys. Uh, they sort of flank them from both sides. They have, like, an advanced group and a a group on the other side to sort of catch the monkey and they'll just corner it and just, you know, just start poking it. It's, uh, yeah. They're one of the few primates that use, they will, lots of primates use tools, but yeah. they're one of the few that use weapons. Yeah. <laughs> like other, other primates will use tools. Like there's capuchin monkeys that will break open nuts and stuff with rocks, but they don't use them to kill other animals, which makes chips sort of unique in that regard. Uh, yeah. Although, in terms of scary primates, I think chimps are, you know, obviously deserved. They're, I, I'm going to go ahead and say that they are the scariest primate. But with that being said, um, macaques are also really scary. <laughs> I, I work with macaques currently, and 
lot of people underestimate them, Greg Chandran. But I they can are... kick one across a fucking. I, I, I don't I understand how you that. have so much trouble with them. I will, they... punch, I will punch a macaque forty yards. <laughs> I, w- I would never do that because I think macaques are you know precious and they're God's creatures. And they I'm saying if I had to fight one, <laughs> if I had to fight a macaque, I could punch it. Clear fifty yards. I don't know. I don't agree. A lot of degree. There. I don't have viewpoints here. <laughs> do, you, do you think you could take a macaque in a fight? I think macaques are like people. They have personalities, and I just don't want to risk coming across the one that happens to be an asshole. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. I, so many of them are just assholes, though. Because well, this this is a... actually a, yeah a good segue into our second article. <laughs> oh, what was that? <laughs> Anyways, so. This article is from Smithsonian. Uh, it's called Japanese macaques invade a small city in Japan and clash with residents. Now, uh, I'm not sure if anyone saw this on the news, but it uh, this headline was being passed around with a picture. We talked about this like a couple episodes ago of this macaque uh, sitting at someone's window with his hand pressed up against the glass, just staring into the home. And it was <laughs> fucking terrifying. <laughs> but um. Uh, The first little snippet here is that more than 50 individuals have been attacked by a group of roaming macaque monkeys in and around the southern Japanese city of Yamaguchi in the past three weeks. The monkeys have mostly targeted children and women, though officials say attacks on men and the elderly have become more frequent. Uh, Here's a quote here. They are so smart and they tend to sneak up and attack from behind, often grabbing at your legs, says city official Misato Saito. Um... I have never seen anything like this in my entire life. Um, I'm so sorry. (laughs) Human monkey conflicts are becoming increasingly common as the macaque population grows and their natural habitat is destroyed, says uh, Miko Kiono, an expert in wildlife management in Japan. Officials say so many attacks within a short time period are rare, per the AFP. Some residents are now carrying umbrellas and tree-cutting scissors to fend off potential monkey assaults, according to the publication. It might be acceptable and understandable if they just ate agricultural crops alone, Saito tells the New York Times. Isake Ueno and Mike Ives, but if they harm humans, we need to do something. They're walking around with sit- giant, like, tree cutting scissors? What are they doing? What they- What's the plan? I, I, don't, I don't know if that's, like, the ideal monkey fighting weapon. I feel These like there's... People are ready. <laughs> <laughs> they are I mean, at least they're at least they're staying strapped i guess but um, like me and greg talk a lot of shit these people are living it <laughs> they're living they're living the night they're ready us. for it they're on the front lines of monkey warfare <laughs> i don't think anyone's ever truly ready for something like that <laughs> yeah because yeah, i mean especially because they say the monkeys are sneaking up behind them and just ambushing them like taking out their legs uh, <laughs> that's so there's, funny there's a little uh snippet here that says that they'll like run up and like take a bite out of someone's ankle and run away which is uh i i hammer this in every time we talk about macaques but it's especially scary because macaques all macaque species carry a strain of the herpes virus called herpes b and uh, mm-hmm. for macaques, it's just normal herpes. But um, as you may all know by now, uh, herpes B is fatal to humans in, I think, like 70% of cases almost. It's uh, very nasty stuff. It'll, super like, herpes. It's like super herpes, pretty much. <laughs> it's funny you even mention that. that. That's actually becoming a legitimate problem down in Florida. You've probably heard about this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was, yeah. Really, I'm so glad yeah. you brought that so up, like, actually. Uh, I don't, it might have been the, in the 60s. There was like this spring lake uh some type of park in florida and in, inside the park there's this little island and i guess they wanted to do this little tarzan thing for like the people going through so they brought what were they reese's macaques i can't remember there was like six I, of them something brought, yeah. yeah something like that brought them on the island it's like okay it's gonna be cute and they didn't realize macaques can swim and that's the first thing they did <laughs> as soon as they come down they swam right to the mainland and then the monkeys did, you know, what monkeys like to do. And I don't know the exact number, but it's in the currently in the hundreds of macaques yeah. now just running around in that area of Florida. And like you said, they a lot of them are carrying this virus to the point where they're like shedding it through their drool. So if it, yeah. if they're drooling it, if one bites you, and of course the chances of like, uh, uh, I guess, um, catching it that way from a human, I, I think it's a lot lower than like the reports might uh easier to believe but like it's not yeah. zero so it's still it's not zero. i don't even know this <laughs> yeah um Damn. 
most infections that have been recorded have been uh, from things in research labs splashing into the eyes of researchers. I'll, I'll leave that up to the imagination. What is splashing in their eyes? But uh, anything that's coming in contact, like fluid wise with like human mucous membranes uh, is just like a fast track to getting infected. And I think uh, in 20, the most recent death was in China in 2020, a researcher was uh, performing an autopsy on a macaque monkey and contracted it and died like two weeks later. So it's, uh, it's, 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 it's nothing to not be concerned about. Yeah. But, you know. <laughs> All right. And then maybe Floridians have more things to be worried about. Well, <laughs> well shit. Still over to yeah. Florida. How do you explain yeah. that to family? It's bad enough <laughs> having the virus, but then you got to explain know. how you got it. And it's just no one's going to hear you out. Yeah, I got, I got some macaque drool in my eye or the damn monkey peed on my leg. Like <laughs> it's, it's like it's like someone showing up to your door. It's like, uh, we don't know how to say this. Uh, your son ha- got peed in the eye by a monkey and died. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so uh, embarrassing. That's a hell it of an obituary. You better write that on the headstone. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, it's got to go on the headstone. Oh, got absolutely. It, got it. Died of monkey pee. <laughs> got it. Well, you know, uh, that's probably a good segue, all right, into this little this little side topic we're going to do. So, you know, if your city was invaded by macaques, I think you're in New York, right, Mamadou? Uh, New Jersey, but like New a lot Jersey. of us just say we're from New York anyway. Fair enough. You're from the greater metro. Yeah. So let's let's say let's say macaque showed up in your town. What's what's your way to defend yourself? My way to defend myself. I am defecting as soon as possible. I am <laughs> I'm going, I'm taking their side. I, I don't know what I have to do to win their favor. Probably food related, but I am like I am not like I'm not I don't have a fear of primates or monkeys i think i have more of an awareness and i'm just not taking yeah. like i i saw that picture you were talking about where it's this room and then you see this monkey peering in through the window and i feel like yeah. the moment that happens to me at night is i'm just i'm not trying <laughs> that's what i'm backing <laughs> up and leaving <laughs> i'm just no, gonna I, be I stressed that. the entire time i'm just i'm giving up <laughs> so yeah um austin what's your plan for when the macaques get to chicago huh <laughs> yeah, um, when, when your research goes terribly wrong and yeah and there's like some sort of like blood out lab of, break out, out of the university <laughs> what will you do um i don't know if i'll have to worry about it to be honest i think i'm the first person that they're killing <laughs> 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 but it's like it's not that i'm like doing anything horrible to them it's just that they know that i'm the guy who has all the treats and uh when i give them treats some of them uh, have got the bright idea of while I'm like handing the treat tray to them for them to like, you know, pick off one or two, they'll like lunge at me and like slap my hands and just like take all the treats that they can. Um, <laughs> it's gotten to the point where this one, I'll be like trying to just casually offer him a grape to just like calm him down. Be like, hey, I'm just here to, you know, get your weight. And that's all I want to do. And he'll see me approaching. He'll just grab my hand and just like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> no, I just got two new cats, corn dog and nutter butter. They're very cute. And when I, when we were bringing them in, I was so fucking scared that they were going to hate me. <laughs> if I had to walk into work every single day with these creatures, these wild animals who hate your guts, I, would, I couldn't do it. Yeah, Honestly, dude, I couldn't I do couldn't, it. I couldn't. I think, I think I might get lucky. Like if the macaques invaded Salt Lake City, I think I could outlast them. I think I would survive the elements better than them. So I would just wait for the one day when it's 110, followed up by the day where it's there's two feet of snow on the ground. I think uh-huh. I can I think I can outlive them. I maybe I do just think if I got into a, a face-to-face, like hand-to-hand combat situation, I think I'd probably lose if there's more than two. I think one or two, I think I might be able to like spook them. You kick one hard enough and like take off. And then I'm getting in my car, and I'm just going to be the, Once them, they gonna have the it. third one, that's when they start getting confident. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They start to really get a, they get a, start getting a weight advantage on me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the cutoff, three. The cutoff, yeah, definitely think, three. Okay, the cutoff's definitely three. The third one, it's over off. for me. I'm washed. <laughs> Dog water. I, okay, I think if, if any primate invaded Charlotte, my plan, like, no matter the size. My plan would just be to destroy the city. 
<laughs> there's nobody. There's nobody worth saving here. There's nothing worth keeping. You're gonna make him. You're gonna make him glass. Glass. The, glass the city. Huh? My Twitter. My Twitter like username Covenant is Halo Dirty Reach. Bomb Unit, <laughs> Unionist for a reason. Follow me. <laughs> after oh this my gift. God. Uh, Jesus. I, I, I will destroy the city before I let uh, a primates take it over. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, I, th- I don't know. I think like tamarins you could handle. They're just like basically like squirrels. In a- Except, I even if I was so I can take, take a bunch of tamarins. I just I just need the excuse. And it's like I'm I'm playing a game. I'm playing like a four X game. I just need the excuse. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't even about the monkeys anymore. You just want to level the city. Yeah, this is just some vengeance this stuff you got going on with Charlotte. I, man. I am done with Charlotte. <laughs> you I, got I had to drive. Pick. I had to drive on Independence Boulevard today twice. <laughs> enough to make any man go insane fair enough fair enough <laughs> uh but um you know yeah we're i think, I think folks think... oh go ahead austin oh yeah a lot of discussions uh tend to focus around like hand-to-hand combat uh at this point if they're invading all the you know like fairness goes out the window i'm like taking any weapon that i can i'm not like picking up like pole arms i'm <laughs> Fair enough. I think you can throw a bag of bread and they just run away from you, so you're probably good. Maybe. I mean, the, the thing is, of most of these attacks are food motivated. Like, I'm I know in. Bag of bread? They like ducks. <laughs> in India, for example, um, uh, there's like a lot of examples of, you know, macaques just mind their own business, but when, you know, shopkeepers like turn their backs, they'll just swarm the shop, take all the fruits they can, and just run out like. You know, like in their hands, just like running on two feet. Um, so, I I'm so sad. I have not gotten to see any little monkeys in India yet. I'm gonna keep yeah. going until I finally see them. You find monkeys. some, yeah. I'm Funny until they the take packs. your passport and you're there for life. Yeah. <laughs> I'm fine. Yeah. I have family there. You know, what? I'll just I'll become a citizen. I'm cool. With it. There's a monkey out. comes back with your passport, just takes your life. <laughs> Take your identity too. <laughs> Make it, you're gonna have a, have a macaque try and go get it, go to college for you. <laughs> yeah, the first ever macaque to get an English degree, masters. <laughs> good for him. Good for him. Yeah, you know, no, we need we need more. Too. We do yeah, get that macaque first, out there. You know, the first macaque class trained at the university. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! But um, um, you know, I think that might lead us in. To the, the hook that's going to make all you guys at home stay and listen to the whole episode, okay? <laughs> we're going to talk about the top 10 primates that will absolutely fuck you up in a 1v1. And now, we're not going to go through these in order to start out with. At the very end, we'll try and give you guys a ranking that maybe all of us can agree on. But um, we're just going to give you a little bit of information about them. We're going to talk about how bad they can fuck you up. And at the end, we'll rank them all. So, you know. So before we get right into that... We're going to listen to a quick little pre-recorded ad from our sponsor. Hey y'all, because we're such consummate professionals, we decided to pre-record the mid-roll ad for this super special episode. So, here goes nothing. Do you like coffee? Do you like relitigating the Travis the Chimpanzee attack with your friends? Well, come on down to monkeycultcoffee.com. Monkey Cult just released a brand new bourbon chocolate chip infused coffee flavor, which I promise you is absolutely delicious. I would not have a sponsor on the show if I didn't actually enjoy the product, and this coffee is really sincerely amazing. So if you'd like, go ahead and head on over to monkeycultcoffee.com. Get yourself some coffee, get a cool t-shirt, get whatever you want, okay? And make sure you use code TRAVIS at checkout, okay? Just like the chimp, code TRAVIS, okay? And that's 10% off your order, so please check it out. Other than that, thank you guys so much for listening to the episode this far, and I hope you enjoy the rest of it. Bye! First off, you've got you've got the king, the apex, the scariest one of all. The apex psycho. Chimp, (laughs) alright? So I think I think we all you've heard from the three of us how bad a chimp will fuck you up. But for those of you who are listening to the podcast, I might not have ever heard (laughs) Ramadu tell you how bad a chimp will fuck you up. Why don't you why don't you give us a little bit about how they'll how they'll beat your ass? <laughs> okay, so the thing with chimps that like freaks me out, like, is just the level of uh, premeditation. They have that kind of intelligence and they're also intelligent enough to be downright malicious. And they oh, yeah. can plan like coordinated attacks on people, sometimes out of food insecurity, sometimes as like revenge, sometimes because they just feel like it. Uh, I don't know if you ever uh, well, actually, yeah, I'm just going to tell the story. So I went, when I was seven years old, I went to Senegal and I went to the zoo. 
uh, kind of run down, not really like a very, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. And the chimpanzee exhibit was like prison bars, as in if you wanted to, I don't know why you would, but you could reach your arm in there and touch the chimpanzee. You probably oh. wouldn't get it back, but you could. So <laughs> these people, also that. in this area, there isn't a whole lot of like, uh, I guess, education about wildlife, or I guess people don't take an mm. interest. I say that yeah. because they were throwing rocks at the chimp. I oh repeat, oh, they shit. were throwing rocks at an animal that has thumbs. So, and the chimp was just standing there taking it. Well, they weren't hitting the chimp, but it was more like they were like taunting him and the chimp was just sitting there. And I feel like it was weird that I was the only one that thought like, is this not a, like a really bad idea? And, and then eventually they ran out of rocks. So then the chimp got up from where he was sitting. You know exactly where it goes from here. Picks up the rocks and everyone knew what time it was. So he start starts running. throwing them back. <laughs> So I was with my older uh, brother at the time. He tells me to get under a bench. So I go under the bench. Uh, I didn't see him for a while. So then I get up and I, I shit you not, maybe like what, six inches from my right eye, a rock just whizzes right past my face. And I always tell the story because if somebody would have gotten my attention in the wrong direction, I would have been Nick Fury. I would be missing an eye. And <laughs> things like yeah, that. And I... even there, it's like that was obviously revenge, but like they don't really like they can just go off the handle for no reason whatsoever. Uh, yeah. You mentioned the attacks on children. Uh, and also in the wild, sometimes they just don't differentiate people from like animals. Like you mentioned how they'll hunt vervet monkeys, colobus monkeys. They use the exact same tactics on human children. They will snatch them when like their caretaker or whoever's supposed to be watching them has their back turned. And in the time it takes for you to notice is the time it takes for them to, well, no more baby or whatever they took. Yeah. So yeah, they, yeah. I, I, they, they like, I, I appreciate them from like behind a plexiglass wall where they can't touch me or like yeah. from behind a TV screen where I'm nowhere near them. Uh, I've always been interested in them. They terrify me. And I never understand the oh, people yeah. that try to have them as pets. Never get it. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, no. let me tell We have covered <laughs> just about everybody who's had a chimp as a pet and had that chimp lose their fucking mind. Travis, so, of course, the famous. Travis, oh, the most Travis. famous of them all. Travis, the like the 50 cent of chimps gets shot a bunch <laughs> of times and keeps on trucking. <laughs> That's they, a way they, to describe it. They shot sure. him like, what, four times, I think? And he, the uh, whole time he's still and trucking. And knife to the back. Yeah, and yeah. he was still so going. Yeah, he was. He was. Uh, he was on something for a second. I think well, that's the scariest part about chimps. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was barred the fuck out. <laughs> like, I, that's the thing that scares me most about chimps is that like it's not like you can pop them and then you're good. No, yeah, no he's still gonna, he's got momentum. He's can, he's gonna keep coming for a while. He's got like that berserker rage. <laughs> They're like tiny grizzly bears, but with thumbs. And I don't yeah. think enough yeah. people understand that. Yeah, there was well, the thumbs uh, is the worst part because they don't have like claws to kill you. They just they just kind of squeeze they just, you. They just yeah. squeeze. They just yeah, grab it's and horrible. rip stuff off and then try it again. And uh, yeah. for, all, for all the viewers, because I know there's a good amount of people out there that think it's. I, I think I could take a chimp. I work out a good amount. I want you guys <laughs> to Google hairless chimps. That's what they're hiding <laughs> under all that fur. They are just yoked the hell out for no reason. Yeah, you, you cannot beat one in a fight. It's it's not yeah. happening. There is no reality in which you do that. We've the barred out chimp still got still got what he wanted. Like you are not beating exactly. a chimp. I have to I have to point out also that it's not even just their physique. Um, it's a part of their anatomy where uh, human muscle fibers are sh much shorter than chimps. Uh, Whereas chimps, they have like very long arms and their muscles, their biceps, their forearms are way longer. So they can leverage that. And I use this example all the time. It's like using a really long wrench, how just because of physics, more force gets exerted at the end of it. A chimp, um, they can hit probably about as hard as a professional boxer just by default. And that's with them being <laughs> like half the weight of an average, you know, man, uh, so it's 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 very scary. They'll and fucking fly at you. Yeah, they will. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah they have no inhibition. Because uh, <laughs> yeah. a lot, a common uh, misconception is that chimps will both throw out numbers like they're five to six stronger, five to six times stronger than uh, an adult man. They're actually more like maybe one and a half to two times stronger. It's just where they're stronger is like they have a stronger grip force, and they oh, basically yeah. have four hands. And then their bite force is so much stronger. And then, like you said, the long arms. So 
they're stronger in all the ways you wouldn't want them to be. So, and that's yeah. where they can really hurt you. Pretty much yeah. everything that can hurt you, they're better at. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And uh, I actually, I'm glad you mentioned that story about a rock just whizzing past your face because I think we uh, share a connection there a little bit. I, I used to work at a chimpanzee sanctuary before I went into research uh, with macaques. And when I was working at this chimp sanctuary, the chimps had access to the outside. It was like a fenced off, obviously. They couldn't just, you know, run wild. Uh, but they had a couple of acres, so they had free reign, more or less. And there were rocks outside, and sometimes the chimps would bring rocks in. <laughs> and uh, for some reason, I was new there. They thought, I guess, it would be a good idea to send me in, like, to the top alone to clean part of the uh, uh, enclosure. Because basically, we would separate them from the enclosure that we were cleaning, but they could still see us, like, on the other side of the bars. And this one chimp... Uh, came up to me and he had his hand behind his back and I was like, Hey, what's up? And I just went back to cleaning. I hear a loud ding right next to my head. I look and I see a rock has fallen. This chimp had taken smuggled a rock inside the previous day because while we're cleaning, we (laughs) cut off their access Um, from the previous day, stashed this rock and threw it at my head inches. Of, I don't know how close it was, but inches away, just dinged off the thing. And <laughs> I, I just had to keep cleaning because it's like, well, he didn't hit me. He's out of rocks, I guess. I hope. <laughs> uh, how big was the rock? Was it like a, like a, it was, was like, you trying to fucking get your ass? It, it, it was like, <laughs> it was hand sized, I think. Hand oh, sized. Whoa. It was, it was, it was not pleasant. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, all yeah. right. All right. I'm going to say, but yeah, I'm gonna let's, say, We'll keep this as a tentative number one, but we're going to talk about some scarier <laughs> yeah. monkeys in yeah, different let's, ways. Let's not let's not let the other ones off easy. Yeah. I would so love let's... to make the alternate universe Austin with brain damage from that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! The bizarro world Austin, <laughs> where the, where the rock hit me and I just got clobbered. <laughs> <laughs> but um, let's let's move on to a fan favorite of everybody and the namesake of this podcast, the gorilla. All right. I just want to, I want to go first here. So gorillas terrify me in like a way, in like a way where like, I don't even like seeing them at the zoo. Like, even though I know they're behind a foot of glass or like in the case of like the zoo near me, their outside part is in a pit. They're like 20 feet below you. Yeah. I, they terrify me. It's, they're very uncanny valley with their facial expressions. And then like, you seen those things? <laughs> they can't. They literally can bench like 800 pounds. No problem. Like, I, I don't want to smoke huge. with a gorilla. And, like, they can pummel you. I, there's not that many cases of gorilla attacks on people. But, yeah, like, they're, they're usually, pr- they're like gentle giants, more yeah. or less. Yeah. But the capability, if they had the mindset yeah. of a chimp, yeah. we, the, we would have had to, like. The few you. attacks that there are, it's usually, you piss off the gorilla. You're you're a you. They turn you into like a pudding sack. Like there's <laughs> no bones left unbroken with a fucking gorilla. <laughs> yeah, I, I see, I've seen a video of a gorilla like slapping the ground really hard and just like the reverberation on just solid earth that I I just didn't think was possible from any like a living being. <laughs> it's because they can like formulate a hit too. It's it's very scary, but. Thankfully, they're they're kind to us. They're kind enough to not maul us at every given opportunity. <laughs> uh, yeah. Honestly, a uh, think... gorilla with the mentality of a chimpanzee might be the most terrifying thing on the planet. But uh, <laughs> unstoppable. A, a gorilla with the mind of a chimpanzee would have out evolved our ass on cocaine. Like, <laughs> we <laughs> would not be here. We <laughs> they would I think be ruling the earth. <laughs> they would have like. Regardless of intelligence, they would have just like turned us into like fucking like play things, just like slapping us yeah. around like the Hulk in the Avengers one, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Boy. It's third one. Yeah. There's just no way you can fight yeah. a gorilla. No. Yeah, no. It, it's it's it just hits you. It just hits you. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's just, just, it just I think you. the only thing you can really do is that if you've pissed off a gorilla to the point where it wants to touch you, you're already like fucked up really bad. Yeah. <laughs> but if you were like lay on the ground and you just don't seem like a threat, eventually it might like with chimps, that's not gonna work because they're just chimps. They'll they're keep like, going. Oh, yeah, they'll just yeah. they'll, they won't stop. Oh, I, yeah. I imagine a gorilla at some point's like, okay, you're no threat and I'm kinda bored now. So you know You gotta do like yeah. the grizzly bear thing. 
Yeah. Yeah. Except just pray doesn't eat you alive. But uh, <laughs> yeah. oh, do you know the story? Have you heard of uh, the story of Bikido, the gorilla in uh, Netherlands? Bikido. Yeah, we did a oh, bonus episode on that actually. Bikido. Yeah. I can't remember what. Oh that man. He like so there, hurdled the enclosure, right? <laughs> yeah. People that uh, haven't heard, there was this woman. She loved going to the zoo. She would go like five times a week, and her favorite animal to visit was this male silverback gorilla, Bikido, and she would always smile at him and like make heavy eye contact and the zookeepers were like yeah don't do that like cut it out <laughs> and he would say well you don't know him the way i know him he loves me and he always smiles back yeah <laughs> one day she pulled the same thing and then you know she went to another part of the zoo but keto broke out tracked her down and beat the living shit out of her like, tongue, like <laughs> yeah. i think she had maybe 40 different bite wounds fractures all over yeah Somehow lived, so that tells you he had mercy because yeah, yeah, no, he, and then he, he won. Broke, and then he broke into a restaurant because I guess you know yeah, he's already he's out like, there, you know. He's <laughs> <on the drug>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Might as well get out there while you know. Yeah. Um, if I were I'm actually in the lens, the last place I'd go is a restaurant. I'm like, I want food. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, yeah, because but at that zoo now they have everybody has glasses for Bikido where your eyes are not looking right at him. Yeah, <laughs> clearly it sets him off. <laughs> they but, uh, actually he said, uh, uh, "This doesn't really change how I feel. I'm still gonna go visit him." So I guess he just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I guess, oh, no, you gotta be some kind of damage, I guess. Yeah, we also talked about. Oh yeah, this. There's actually two stories that are sort of similar to that. One we talked about in the Dallas Zoo, uh, or no, sorry, not the Dallas Zoo, the El Paso Zoo. Um, a woman went into the spider monkey enclosure to feed them Cheetos. And uh, when asked, or like, basically she got banned from the zoo. And she said, I, uh, I have no remorse. I would do it again. <laughs> because it seemed like they wanted Cheetos, which not, that's not a good idea. I think she got out Flame relatively hot. unscathed, but... Still, even spider monkeys are. <laughs> they're Wasn't she a paralegal too? So, some type uh, of oh yeah, yeah. A yeah. respectable so, profession that would make yeah. you think you would be smarter than that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, recently, I don't know if you've talked about this. I'm, I'm sure you've at least seen it. But in the Dallas Zoo, someone broke in and stole two tamarind monkeys and tried to cut free some uh, langur monkeys. And recently, uh, some court documents were given to the AP where he said, if he is released from jail, he will do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like a great way to get yourself out, man. I know that story because someone sent it to me and said, you in an alternate universe, and I couldn't really argue. <laughs> <laughs> I, I respect the conviction. I, I That much I will say. But <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, here's another personal terrifying one of mine. So number three, at least tentatively, baboons. All right, mm. they're like bunky wolves. All right, <laughs> have you seen their fucking teeth? Like <laughs> a baboon will fuck you up so badly. It's like it's like fighting a shark on land. I've I worked they at a zoo so where <laughs> I, I worked at a zoo where we had a big olive baboon named Samson, and <laughs> he we I would throw him sandwiches like full peanut butter and je- or not sorry not jelly but peanut butter sandwiches uh we also put like some other nutrient stuff on there um but instead of just like handing him the sandwiches through a hopper or whatever he liked to do this thing where i would throw the whole sandwich and he would just catch it in his mouth and just swallow it in one bite (laughs) he was like the size of like a great dane it was scary (laughs) like not all baboons are that big but when they get that big i i would not i would want nothing to do they don't lose that mobility they go (laughs) (laughs) yeah (laughs) Honestly, it's gelata baboons that I see in my nightmares. Gelata it's not because they eat almost so nothing but grass, scary. right? They spend their entire day yeah. grazing. But then they have, like, canines that would make you think they eat nothing but meat. So it's like... Yeah. That just seems they're, like... A they're yeah. absolutely terrifying. Because they're, they're on the list, too, so this is good. The yeah. Gelatas, that shit they have going on with their chests is the most yeah. intimidating thing. Uh, the I think you can heart. put on yeah. a monkey. Yeah, the bleeding heart. <laughs> It's the most terrifying shit. Like, how do you score like up horror on horror villains? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like uh, the female <laughs> thing is sexy. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it's from a certain perspective, I guess, you know, but <laughs> not me, not me. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Um, nah, they're, they're terrifying. Like there's a reason, there's a reason that like, you know, people are scared of baboons when they go on safari. You're not like, you're not as afraid of a gorilla. But like you the, go- gor- <laughs> the gorillas are going to leave you alone. The baboons. Yeah, the, the baboons. First off, there's never just one. There's like a hundred <laughs> at any given time. They're it's in these never massive just a lot of them. troops. They're terrifying. Yeah. Oh, but you know, that's actually, that actually comes back to like the people. So basically, I, I even looked into this. It was like really funny because it's like super ironic. But um, basically, in a, with a lot of primates, especially chimps and baboons, like when you have these uh, submissive males, they have to give up whatever food they have to the alpha males, right? So. Uh, normally, there's there's no argument. They just come over. You hand it over, right? Tourists love feeding baboons. Baboons don't see it as humans feeding us. They see it as these monkeys are just low ranks and they're just giving up food. So now they've yeah. done it so much, even though people tell them not to, that now these uh, baboons, especially in South Africa, they now see all humans as just low ranks. So they expect food from all humans. And if they don't get that food, well, then they confront you the way they would to like a lower rank. And now it's happening to everybody over there. And it's just a nightmare. And it's like when they tell you not to feed the animals, it's not just for the animal's health. It's for your way of life, too. Like, Yeah, yeah it's it's to save you. South I'm sure Africa is so it. racist, it even makes the monkeys racist there. That's <laughs> insane. Oh, my God. I, <laughs> uh, fucking, God, um, they, they're fucking terrifying. I'm sure you've seen that video of... It was it was viral on Twitter for a while of this baboon breaking into someone's Airbnb in South Africa, and it's just like it's just walking on the counter. Oh, it's not a care yes. in the world. It just pops open a bag of chips, eats it, just starts going through the alcohol. <laughs> it's a very yeah, no, it's that's a very funny way of thinking about it. Actually, I, I guess I've never <laughs> considered that specific angle, but I'm also more a uh, macaque and chimp guy myself <laughs> uh, um, and then you know we've got austin's favorite horniest monkey around oh no right? <laughs> the bonobo all right <laughs> now bonobos they're known for being like the horny monkeys right because they solve all their interpersonal conflicts with sex instead of violence however Just i have like it on, me for real i have it on good word <laughs> and a couple of you know anecdotes that bonobos, when uh, when they feel like it, can be just as violent and strong as chimps. Uh, bonobos are smaller than chimps, but um, Kanzi the bonobo in particular, we talked about this a couple episodes ago. He had a caretaker that he was arguing with, and he tracked him down, like left the enclosure, tracked him down, and bit his thumb off, and then went back to his enclosure. Uh, so, yeah, how the grudge against them. Yeah. They, they deserve a spot on this list as a great ape. I think. Wait, so basically they got into an argument. He had time to think about it. He was like, you know what? No, I can't let it slide. He broke out and then bit his thumb. Yeah. Well, there you go. There's you know, a, there's you know, some like articles. Like a lot of these great apes, I think could get charged with murder in the third degree. <laughs> like they, there's a <laughs> lot of premeditation <laughs> going on here. Yeah. Like they're thinking about it. They're weighing their options and then they're choosing to hurt you. Like it, <laughs> Yeah, they're they're choosing violence. They're not every doing time. on accident. Yeah, truly. Um, next one on the list is sometimes uh, geladas, mandrills, and baboons are lumped together. But just for the sake of padding out the list, we also have mandrills down because they are technically you know, separate species. Um, mandrills, we talked about them earlier. They've got the the blue face and the mandrills got the big ass. <laughs> it's, I uh, think yeah, so. Yeah, they've red ass, they've all got so. pretty yeah. large red asses to, <laughs> to put it uh, uh, bluntly. But with the the thing with uh, having the blue faces correlate to high testosterone, it means that it's easier for uh, female mandrills to sexually select for higher testosterone. Meaning that just as time goes on, the more aggressive high testosterone mandrills are going to keep getting selected for, and they're just going to keep getting more aggressive. So <laughs> I think they're, they're a sleeper candidate on this list. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. They're just, they're breeding the be- biggest, beefiest, meanest guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of like kangaroos where they're just like, 
getting more and more roided up as time goes on for the same is, reason. Is that how kangaroos work? Yeah, no, they're, I think they're, there's a concern that they might like um, breathe themselves into extinction because uh, they're getting like so muscled up and like ridiculous that they're like starting to die of like health defects. So it's a oh, wow. uh, very interesting Damn. stuff. Huh. Well, <laughs> what else we got on the list here? We got, um, well, we do got, we got out spider monkeys. We do got to talk about spider monkeys because they're a good like swarm you monkey. Yeah. Mm. And they, and they got, they got the long arms. Like you can't, awesome. if you square up with a spider monkey. I know they're about yay high, but <laughs> His reach is insane. He's got a wingspan of both my arms. He's got he's got the tail too, where the tails essentially function as thumbs, right? Where um, I personally experienced a spider monkey while I was walking by with a bowl of food, uh, simply grab the bowl of food from me with its tail, um, yeah. and just like <laughs> and just take it. I was like, what? <laughs> so like so all the other monkeys are mad at me because this one guy got all the you know like little sandwiches. I'm like, I get up, and he, he grabbed it from me. How, well, how often are you giving? How often are monkeys getting sandwiches? It, this was just this, was, this <laughs> was might have been the same day, to be honest with you. It was, like an, <laughs> it was like an enrichment day where we were giving them peanut butter sandwiches. <laughs> I thought um, your job was just to go around the sanctuary <laughs> feeding sandwiches to little monkeys. <laughs> yeah, no, that would sounds be like fun. next level hazing. <laughs> right, like nobody has yeah. to tell you, hey, uh, might want to watch out for that, or no. yeah, they put no. him in an apron, they shove him in the kitchen, they said, "Get yeah. to work, Twain." Yeah. So yeah. this is like a, <laughs> this is like a this is if a you smaller lived, then you're hired. Yeah. yeah, you know, this not for a... nothing, folks, but this is a common theme with Austin. So if it's your first time, go back and listen to our catalog of Austin getting hazed by different monkeys. For the entire course of his yeah, career. Yeah, no, now that right. you bring it up, I have to I have to mention this. The chimpanzees at the chip sanctuary, um, they learn to recognize interns by the color of their shirts. And so they would try to trick us into feeding or not sorry, uh giving them water with a hose, you know, just like waterfall it into their mouths. Like they would motion to it too. So it's like, oh, you can infer what they want. And what they do with the interns is they get you in close. They're like, no, 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 come closer. And then once you're close enough to pour it in, they'll grab the hose, rip it from you, and start spraying the other chimps to, you know, cement their place in the hierarchy. And you, and you can't get it back. Yeah, what they learned that he used the hose? <laughs> yeah, the... You can't get it back because you're not going to win a game of tug of war with a chimp. <laughs> I, I would love to see just give just like let's vacate like Dallas, right? We don't need Dallas anymore. Okay, <laughs> vacate Dallas, <laughs> fill it with every single non-human primate. I just want to see what behaviors we observe if we give all the primates in the world a city to work with. You know, they just get to hang out in the city. They get to use all of this infrastructure to establish their little, you know, their dominance. A little fiefdom. Yeah, they got a little fiefdom <laughs> set up. I want to. I want to see a warring states Dallas. Um, I don't know. Bonobos <laughs> and chimps. They, and, there would be uh, like Planet the of the Splinter Apes, chimps. like like chimps riding horses, like shooting bows and arrows, like Genghis Khan, like through the streets. <laughs> Our hands right, would definitely figure out nuclear technology if we did that. Oh, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. And they sure. would do Orang it. Orangutans, no too. problem. Yeah, no problem, no problem. And you yeah. know. That's a good point, all right? Orangutans, nobody thinks of them as violent because they're like, they're like the wizards of the monkey world. They're just they're, wise they're and sage I will and get, quiet. I will give them that. They're very calm. But yeah. they could also fuck you up. We know they could. They're strong. If they're not have tiny seen, either. If you haven't seen orangutan move, you don't understand how scary these guys are. Yeah. Because like, I feel like every time we see orangutans, they're just kind of sitting around, having a good time. You watch like them move around the trees... They fly and they are huge. They, yeah, are, they are dude big. size. They, they are, are people size. And yeah, they are, they are, they are the size times. of a person. And they are whipping around. They are quick and they are quiet. Like a an orangutan gets up behind you, it's over. It's over. <laughs> All uh, I they also have a thing what it with must the... have been like for the first person to ever see an orangutan and what he told people when he got back. Because like, you know, know. Him. like, dude, you're yeah. never gonna believe this. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's like this big furry orange people <laughs> with huge heads just hanging out out there, and they don't want you to fuck with their space. Yeah, this big deformed ginger man, but he wasn't walking; <laughs> he was just up in the trees. 
Yeah. Just like, it's like, yo, you're off your meds again? Like, no, no one's gonna believe you until you, <laughs> they see you for real. Show. Yeah. However, you know, I feel like they would just fuck with you psychologically. Like they wouldn't use violence. They're they're. It's like like with chimps, like the level of premeditation, but they do it to like like uh, what was his name? Oh, Fu Man. Have you heard about Fu Manchu in the uh, Omaha Zoo? He was this orang oh, no. that uh, so basically um, zookeepers come in one day, all the orangutans are out and they're like, okay, someone left the door unlocked, whatever, get him back in. They're not really confrontational. So you tell them to go one place. They're like, okay, fine. You got it. Next day, same thing happens. The, the, the leaders, the, um, I guess the uh, manager is like, what are you guys doing? Like the second time in a row, this happens for like a good week. And the guy is getting ready to fire somebody because he's getting pissed. And then they check cameras or something. And then they find out Fu Manchu was an older orang who somehow got like a piece of wire from somewhere, like snatched it up. As soon as he saw it, snatched it up, hit it between his like teeth and the lower lip, held it there the entire day. When everybody went home, yeah, see, his face changed because you know exactly where this is going. He took the uh, yeah. manipulated it, turned it into a lock, but like he didn't just let him, he let all of his friends out. And right before, like, the zookeepers would come in the morning, because I guess he memorized their schedule, he'd go right back in his cage, innocent. What's going on? Everyone's out, but I'm just, I'm here. He'd be the ah, last person. Let's go. Oh, my over God. And over and over again until they figured out it was him. He has a statue now. <laughs> Holy shit. That's incredible. He got right. away with it. I was going to say, the right the they're, they're fucking... They're, they're conniving. They're thinking. They're, they're doing things to be <laughs> they're, they're too cerebral. Like, yeah. uh-huh. they would, like, figure out how to psychologically break you down before they kill, they, before they pulled you apart. They are playing <laughs> chess. They are truly the only non-human party to play chess. They're, everyone else are just trying to kill you. These guys, <laughs> these guys figured out these how to These guys want to get out and smoke with you. Like, they're cool, <laughs> but yeah. they should be watched. Like, they are a threat. I but Austin, say, are there... Do you know of any like orangutan attacks on people? Like, is it, does anybody know? Um, they're not frequent, but when they do happen, it's usually like an orangutan grabbing someone and just mm. not letting go. Like, they don't often like the younger ones and the smaller ones will bite you sometimes. Uh, usually, it's out of a territoriality thing, but uh, the bigger ones they'll just grab you and hold you there to make a point. Like, there was another viral video of. I don't know what the context was, but it was some guy uh, next to a cage and an orangutan was on the other side of the cage. He grabs him by the shirt and just starts staring at him. And the guy's screaming for help and he's trying to wiggle away. And then the orangutan grabs his leg and starts like turning him sideways. And yes. <laughs> they like cannot get him wrenched free until the orangutan just gives up. Um, yeah, I, that's that. actually apparently he was yeah. like a wannabe influencer, and you know how stupid people are. He decided oh, I'm gonna yeah. get a video really? with the orangutan, so he was harassing her. Okay, and it didn't just gra- it like whipped its arm out and just seized him. And my favorite part of the video was a guy tried to help him. The orangutan slapped his hand away. He was like, "This is none of your business. Get away!" And like, <laughs> he didn't hurt even hurt the guy. He was just like he was just terrified, and he was just like you said, <laughs> like flipped him sideways. Could have broken every bone in his body. But just wanted to send a message. And I feel like that's what orangutans yeah. would do. They would scare the shit out of us, but not do any physical damage. And I think, I, I respect that about them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, all right, guys. I think, yeah, we're basically rounding out our got, list. Yeah, um, yeah the one last more, one on the list. Which is any large group of small monkeys. Mm-hmm. Any group. <laughs> any group uh, over the size any, of like eight, I think. I mean, like <laughs> 10 capuchin monkeys, I think, would fuck me up. <laughs> yeah. Oh really? Like, cause they're gonna be biting. How heavy they're are be how, biting. Like these small monkeys, like smaller than macaques. Like, like they're less than twenty pounds, on yeah. average. I'm pretty sure the monkeys yeah. talk about this. Like capuchins, yeah, like, yeah. Um, tamarins, small guys. I think I think I if it was with some real heavy boots. How many? Yeah, but like once they get on you, it's over. I can hit it. Listen, I weigh. Like three hundred pounds, I hit the ground. <laughs> I'm taking out a couple easy. <laughs> Listen, I, don't know. I get swarmed. I stop, drop, and roll. I treat it like a fire. It's <laughs> gone. It's possible. It's possible. You know, yeah. well, like, like you get like a little monkey, like a little capuchin, or like a tamarind. Like, you know, they're gonna be biting. All it takes is one for like just to hit you in the Achilles. It's over. Right? <laughs> you're never walking you hamstrings. Again. You're done. Yeah. Like you're, you're done. You're ACL. losing to the monkeys. They're ripping you apart. 
Yeah. Because they got some teeth on them. Even the little yeah. ones. Have you seen a capuchin monkey's teeth? They, uh-huh. they like, it's like a great, sh- a great uh, German Shepherd. We also <laughs> need to account for the fact that the smaller uh, primate gets, not even a primate gets, the more batshit fucking insane they are. <laughs> it's the same as the dog rule. That could show yeah, it's like, crazy. All right? Uh-huh. The Chihuahuas smaller they are, the more no psychotic they are. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think to wrap this list up, though, um, we've given enough examples. I think, uh, Mom, dude, would you like to do the honors of ranking the primates of most to least likely to fuck you up? And of course. Brandon, I think all of them will, but yeah. <laughs> of course. So uh, from uh, least likely to most? Okay, I'll yeah. start, most likely I'll to start least, with I think. least likely. I'm oh, going to go okay. with... Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say a ra- mm, I'm gonna say orangutans least likely because, like I said, like they, mm. they'll, they'll mess with you, but they might they They're might not put their hands on you. Yeah. I I can't tell if that's because <laughs> it's their nature or if they're smart enough to realize if I hurt him, then I die. But if I mess with mm. him, I can mess with him every single day. So I'm gonna put yes, them least definitely. likely. Then I'm gonna put yeah. uh, bonobos because uh, honestly, yeah, okay. they're just they're just kind of just hippie sex monkeys. They just. Yeah, kind of do their own thing. If one gets mad at you, you kind of did something to deserve it. <laughs> next, where what do I rank next? So we got orangutans, we got bonobos. I'm gonna go with, uh, I'll say spider monkeys. Even okay. though they, and this is probably where it gets like kind of dangerous because spider monkeys can do damage. But again, it's more like I feel like they're more likely to try to retreat if they feel cornered. They yeah. might attack you, but. At mm-hmm. that point, you did something to deserve it. Like that woman in El Paso, if she would have gotten like her hair ripped off her scalp, nobody would feel bad for her. So, uh, <laughs> with them next. what do we have? I have, uh, you know, if it wasn't for the whole uh, Yamaguchi situation, macaques would probably be like next. But now that I see what they're doing over there, <laughs> <laughs> evil creatures. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to say mandrills, actually. Okay. Yeah, mandrills. Okay. They're incredibly tanky, high vitality, but I, I, fe- I feel like if they don't see you as a threat, maybe they might let... I, I don't know. I don't know. My knowledge on mandrills isn't as strong, yeah. so I could be completely they're, wrong. They're mostly like herbivores, me for no so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't know. You never know. Yeah, so <laughs> I'll put mandrills. I'll put geladas. Yeah, I'll put geladas next. Mm-hmm. Just off those teeth. That... They, yeah. they, don't, they do not need to have the mouthpiece that they have. I don't know why they yeah. do. <laughs> it's insane. Please, please, people watching this, listening to this, Google what their teeth looks like. You won't believe Please. It. Yeah. Uh, okay. What does that leave me with? That leaves me with chimpanzees, gorillas, bab. Oh, I forgot about gorillas. Okay. Might be controversial. I think I'm going to put gorillas way down on the list. Might, might sandwich them between mandrills mm. and macaques. Just off the fact okay. that they could floor me if they really wanted to, but the thing is they don't care enough to like they spend like so much so many hours a day eating that they don't really want to waste calories on someone that ain't really worth it now. Yeah. If I have a gun and he feels like his life is in danger, then he'll it would be ugly. Yeah. Like it would be really bad. So and then we have Oh yeah, baboons. I'm giving baboons the uh, silver medal just off of the whole South Africa situation. The fact that you yeah. go down there and your chances of getting carjacked by a troop of baboons is zero. And that's kind of ridiculous, <laughs> but it's true. Uh, and I don't know what I would do about that. So yeah. And then you have property damage that you can add to that. So financial too. So they hit you in multiple yeah. ways. So, yeah, they hit your baboons. wallet and they... Yeah. <laughs> But of course, to absolutely nobody's surprise, number one gold medal of will fuck you up has to be chimpanzees. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. 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 People ask Legendary. us why we're called Gorilla Radio Show when we talk about chimpanzees so often. It's because they're lunatics and they just do <laughs> shit all the time. It's, it's they provide the so much content, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what it is. And any animal that yeah. would chew my face off because I exhale too loud is just <laughs> kind of menace. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to start wrapping up here and plugging all of our socials. But real quick, I want to leave our audience on a small excerpt. When I was working at the Chimp Sanctuary, we had a whole section in the safety manual about how to survive and prevent bear attacks. The section on chimpanzee attacks was a single paragraph, and it said, uh, curl up in a ball and try to remain conscious until someone with a gun shows up. (laughs) 
<laughs> so, with that being said, uh, Mamadou, if you want to plug all your social media stuff. Of course. Uh, well, I have uh, Instagram and TikTok. My handle is M-N-D-I-A-Y-E underscore 97. Also, Casual Geographic on YouTube. I make longer form content there. I uh, also have a book that came out last summer. It's uh, 100 Animals That Will Effing End You. And uh, yeah, there's an extra long excerpt for chimpanzees for obvious reasons. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I oh, rate yeah. the animals from 1 to 10 on how dangerous they are. And you can imagine what chimps got. They got a 13. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, yeah. So uh, um, Well, yeah. thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Um, we're yeah. all big fans, and we are just really happy that this happened. Yeah, yeah. super super fucking awesome. Of course, appreciate yeah. you guys having me on. This was a lot of fun. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Um, so, a couple more things before we say goodbye. First, happy birthday, Chandran. Everyone say Aww. happy birthday, Chandran. Happy birthday, Chandran. Happy birthday. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, second, um... Obviously, for a lot of you, this is probably your first time listening, so a couple places you can find us. Um, Twitter is our biggest place where we interact publicly. Um, you can follow us there at gorilla underscore underscore radio. Um, you can find us on Patreon at patreon.com slash gorilla radio show. We've got tiers from a dollar all the way up to $10 if you really feel like you want to be parasocial with us. Come <laughs> hang out. We've got a great community. Um even the dollar tier gets you access to talking to hundreds of other uh, GRS fans. So that's us. I'm going to have a super cool uh, merch store deal coming with this episode drop. So check that out. Um, other than that, I don't have anything else to say. Uh, don't forget our Twitch channel. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we have TV slash the radio show. We stream pretty often. And um, all our links are in our link tree. You can find it down below. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, with that being said, thank you so much for coming on, and uh, we'll see you next time, hopefully. <laughs>